Welcome, my son. Welcome to the machine. Where have you been? It's all right. We know where you've been. You've been in the pipeline, filling time, provided with toys and scouting for boys. You bought a guitar to punish your ma, and you didn't like school, and you know you're nobody's fool. So welcome to the machine. This is the Community Solutions Podcast. Jason Bradley, Andrew Richter. It's our world. You're all just living in it. Hmm. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing terrific. A baseball starts soon. It's always the know. best time of the year. It's, it's, as I call it, the beginning of the downward slide into last place. <laughs> well, well <laughs> maybe. I mean, the shame of it, and uh, I'll just say this, the shame of it is the division is there for the taking. Yeah. I mean, Cleveland, I mean, as long as they have their starting pitching, we're not going to overcome them. Right. But uh, the other teams are in Detroit. Uh, the White Sox in Kansas City are in some stage of rebuilding, whatever mm-hmm. you want to call it. And the Twins are rebuilding all the time, so it's or not at all. Yeah, so it's hard to say. Uh, I mean, I think they'll keep us interested. My guess is uh, by July we'll see another sell-off, and I'll have I'll be in an angry mood come August first. <laughs> That's, That's probably guess. about but, right. Yeah. But in the meantime, I mean, you know, we can enjoy some some baseball and i'm i was you know at spring training a couple of weeks ago so um I, I didn't make the cut they sent me back to minnesota yeah. so well. yeah so you know <clears throat> we'll see what happens but that's I- exciting uh news jay i gotta say something quick here yeah uh, one of the things and it, this is gonna be a strange thing for me to bring up i don't know why i was thinking of this yesterday and you you youngins out there you people you know, maybe like 25 and under probably can't relate to this. We've mentioned this a couple of times. Mm-hmm. You know, when, when we were growing up, Jay, there was, you know, about, I remember about five TV channels. Yes. Okay. You know, you had channel two, channel four, channel nine, channel five and 11. And that, or for us Deleuthians, it yeah, was three, six, 10, three, 13. Six, no, three, six, eight, and 10. That was it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you, we didn't have KMSTP. Oh, so. okay. you didn't have a local uh, no channel okay no. until Fox came around. Yeah, um, and I'll tell you, I don't I don't recall many days being spent laying around watching TV. I mean, forget that I came from a family that was hunting and fishing and playing sports and all that. So I mean, I didn't lay around. But I'll tell you what, if you laid around on a Sunday, for example, and football wasn't on, there wasn't much on television. Right. And you'd be fascinated to know what I watched if there wasn't uh, Superstars of Wrestling weren't on. Because that was on yeah, Saturday that, morning. Well, it was on Sunday afternoons down. Oh, okay, in Duluth? Okay. Duluth. Or up in Duluth. Yeah. Um, but I would sit there and I would watch Preachers on yeah. television. And one station had Billy Graham. The other one who had the uh, the the, uh, the name slips my mind. The guy who got caught with his secretary, uh, uh, Jimmy Baker. Yeah, Jessica Hahn. That was yeah. the, okay. Um, and then the other one, my favorite, the the, the greatest televangelist that I, I have ever seen. And I randomly this showed up on my YouTube. Okay, I yes. don't know why. Okay, it's a man named Robert Tilton. Oh yes, out of Dallas. Yes. And I don't know. You know, I I I, I don't know why. I can understand why people could get sucked into a charismatic uh, leader. Personality. Right. Yes. I mean, and I, 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 look, I don't know why anybody would kill somebody or commit suicide. I'm not going Koresh or, or Manson or Jim Jones on anybody here. But you can be fascinated by these people. Mm-hmm. Looking back on it, I listened to Robert Tilton. Okay, yes. and his big pitch was something called success in life. He had that big southern accent, right? You know? And he would say things like, "And I don't do a very good Robert Tilton. I'm just going to say what he would say." You sound more like Brother Love, right? Okay, now, but, well, and you but, know, <laughs> Bruce Pritchard based some of his sayings off of uh, yeah, televangelists, right? Um, but he had this thing called success in life. And when I saw this, I thought to myself, and, and it, how could I have, I know I was a kid, but how could I have believed this? You know, I mean, this is, sounds like the greatest racket that you could ever run. <laughs> he would say things like, uh, if you have a dollar, send me 50 cents. Show me your faith. 
Show me you believe. And you know what God's going to do? You know what's going to happen? You're going to have $2. And when you have $2, you send me $1. You show me your faith. God will reward you with $5. Yeah. You send me two fifty, And when you get $10, my friends, <laughs> my goodness. that is called success in life. Wow. Robert Tilt, out of Dallas. Wow. Greatest televangelist that ever lived. Well, that's possible. Uh, I remember... Uh, and I'll tell you, those Sundays, where there's not much... You know, it's not like I had 900 channels, yeah. you know, Lifetime movies and things to pick from, okay? That was, <laughs> you know, or, or Beverly Hills, uh, uh, whatever you call it, uh, 09106 or whatever. I mean, you didn't have that stuff back then. Uh, you know, so it was, uh, I just remember the, behold, God says to send me money. Oh, my goodness. And he will be, you know what, I, I'm going to tell you something. I could do that. I think I ought to become a minute. I, I, I think I'm going to give it some thought. Jay. I, I, you can't do it for that reason, though. To Oh, you can't? Oh, well, then I'm not interested. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Well, and, and I remember, um, oh, when did it come out? It would have been oh, <laughs> early 90s. Uh, there, there was a Christian artist, actually, uh, Steve Taylor, who, had, who wrote a song called Cash Cow. And it was kind of, uh, it was like about the journey of the Israelites out of the Sinai Desert. And, and there was a line in there. And it was talking about that's in you know, the Bible, right? Right, and 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 how the the Israelites, when Moses went up into the mountain to be with God, uh, the Israelites built this golden calf and started worshiping it, um, and and so they, they called this the golden cash cow had a body like the great cows of ancient Egypt and a face like the face of Robert Tilton without the horns. <laughs> 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 so, so yes. there was a downfall there, you know. But then, you know, you, you got, got cable, and what did I have on cable? I Pat Robertson, yeah. Seven Hundred Club. Yeah, you know, I, I remember when he ran for president, but I didn't know he did his own show. Oh yeah, I didn't know that till after that, nineteen eighty eight, when we, yeah. when when you know we got into cable. But I, I, I just, I don't know why I had a flashback to Sunday afternoon, three o'clock. Robert Tilton's on. You know, asking people for money. Yeah. People send it in money. It's not like you had the internet. You couldn't go figure out who was, you know, uh, you couldn't do any research on anybody. You know, it was just like oh, somebody on TV was a big deal now. Yeah. You know, anybody can get on your phone or on. You right. Know, so it's. Well, I would say, though, that that's almost opened things up more uh, because, I mean, you still got some of the, the big. Preachers that are around, like, like Joel Austin, is oh, yeah, Joel Austin, uh, Jimmy Swagger, just still alive and kicking. Yeah, yeah. You've got guys like that, but I think that there is like this huge decentralization, like with everything else. Yeah, and so I think in some aspects you have people. I mean, I'm g not going to say that there aren't those that are there taking advantage of the system. Mm -hmm. uh, they always are going to be. But you, I think you have a lot more people that are more genuine and able to. Uh, and anything, you know, they're there for the right reasons. Yeah, and it does give access to people who want to worship together. That's always a positive. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, just the old, uh, boy, tell you what, if I could transplant back into my 10-year-old and, and be mesmerized watching Robert Tilton yeah. on TV. Well, I think this week I'm going to have to put that song as well onto our oh, uh, songs. All right. Our music from the podcast uh, Spotify playlist. <laughs> so you'll want to tune in to hear that one for sure. Behold, brothers and sisters. So <laughs> we're going to have a twofer this week. All right. So that'll be good. See, look what I caused. Yeah, that's good. Um, an, Back to the news. <laughs> well, it, to, you know, to talk more about people bilking people out of money. Uh, well, you know we're talking local government then. Absolutely. Um, this is actually a story from last year, August of last year. But uh, as court cases tend to go, this, you know, I don't think has been settled yet. Um, this takes us up to St. Cloud, and, and we're looking at a story from the St. Cloud Times. Uh, we've got some friends up in St. Cloud, uh, some people that we've worked with up there. we got friends everywhere. We do. Everywhere we go. It, it just, they multiply. It's good stuff. Uh, here's a headline on this. Group sues city 
city being St. Cloud, for selling parkland to Costco for less than half of fair market value. Hmm. Right. So the big, uh, the big evil corporation is getting uh, another sweetheart deal. I've never heard of that, Brooklyn. Wow. Park. Yeah. How many local lowdowns have we done about <laughs> about corporations getting sweetheart deals and and corporate welfare? Name the city, and we'll show you an example. Yeah, pretty much. Well, we spent the the whole show on on uh, I, I forget what episode uh, about the. Uh, Place at New Hope by the golf course, mm-hmm. um, the the Target, Olympus, and Brooklyn Park. Yep. We went through. I don't even remember. It was. <clears throat> I was so upset when we were when we were done. It just ah. you know it's it's uh, a crying shame to call any of this capitalism. I mean this is uh, this is controlled. Uh, I don't even know what what would you call this. This is this is. Um, it's not communism, but it is uh, a mix of. You know, you're going to buy and yeah. sell goods, but we're going to decide who buys and sells them. Right. You know, that's kind of where we are. Yeah, I mean, I mean it, give us enough campaign contributions, and you know, and and that you know, seeing that there is government influence, it doesn't control the means of manufacturing like like true socialism, but it certainly has socialistic uh, tendencies because you're picking the winners and losers. You're saying these are the people fit to provide these services. These people will let you in, but you got to make your own way. Well, and I mean, ultimately, the small businesses, which everybody praises, are the ones that get screwed the most. I mean, you know, Bob's uh hardware store and and uh you know michelle's uh uh hair salon and mm-hmm. you know uh brian's pizzeria they're not they're gonna they're gonna bear the brunt of this they're right. the ones that the council's gonna go well you know we just can't can't keep those costs down and we just had to give more health insurance to our employees and you know, we had to put franchise fees on your your light bill, so we you know you can pay for the curb that you drive on and already pay for. So I mean, there's you know they'll get there there. Where's their representation in all of this? I mean, you're supposed to treat everybody equally. You're supposed to have equal protection under the law. Right. Not if I'm big enough, I don't have to follow the rules. Right. So you know, it's it's not true competition. You wonder why. Uh, these these little guys are getting squeezed out of the market, and you can go to any kind of market like this. I mean, I mean, think about think about all the rules, regulations on you know the oil industry or on the automobile industry, cafe standards and unnecessary things that we've put on them that have driven some to other countries, some to other states, some to you know the the the. Taxes are so drastically different. Sports note here. Yes. One of the things, you know, Bryce Harper uh, recently signed with the Philadelphia Phillies. Apparently, the other team that hot for him after Washington kind of dropped out or made their best offer was the San Francisco Giants. Hmm. And Harper's agent, actually, I saw this on uh, tweetering, um, said that state income taxes were one of the reasons that he chose Pennsylvania over California. You know, not that Pennsylvania is necessarily a bastion of conservatism. Right. But they estimated, they had an estimate or a chart of how much more in taxes, I can't remember the number, that he would have paid over his uh, 10 year or uh, 10 or 12 year deal or whatever he got. I can't remember the years, but it was up there. (laughs) It was not, you know, he would have lost. Somewhere between ten and twenty million dollars had he taken. Even though I think San Francisco offered him more money, he will actually pocket more money from the Phillies. Yeah. So, but I mean, you just see. That, I mean, that, look, that's one example from, you know, one guy who just happens to be a spectacular athlete. Take that into context. If you're a business, yes, you know, and that's not ten million dollars; it's ten thousand. But that may be. Right, twenty percent of what you're pocketing in a year, ten percent or something like that. Big difference. So, you know, it just. I mean, what you know, and, and here's the thing: they sold it for less than market value, and it was way less than market value. And cities do that all the time. Right. I mean, it wasn't like, hey, okay, we'll give you a five percent discount. To right. Build here. No, it was something. It was in the in the millions, wasn't it? Yeah. 
Yeah, it was. Um, and, and for those who are interested in going back and listening, I, I think it was episode 50, uh, Crony Capitalism in Our Cities. That Wow, that was a while ago. That was a while ago. We may have done one since then, but I know that one dealt with the same kind of thing. So, uh, so yeah, they believe uh, that there's a, a group uh, that had come forward, Citizens for Government Accountability. Yeah, and, and let me point out something, too, when we talk about market value. Yes. You never know true market value until you have two bidders for something. You know, compare it to selling a house, Jay. Right. You think your house is worth two hundred thousand? Just throw something out to make the math easy. Two hundred grand. Yeah. Okay. Somebody comes along and says they're going to offer you. Well, I'll we'll pay you. I'll pay you one ninety-five. Well, your true market value is what a second person would offer you. Hmm. Okay, that's your market value. If you only have one offer, you don't have a market value. Right. You're just guessing at that point. Exactly. So they basically said, okay, Costco, what do you want it for? And worked out a deal. Where's the transparency here? I mean, where's the, you know, you're, you're, you're selling land. It's not owned by the city. It's owned by the citizens of St. Cloud. Right. So where's their seat at the table when the council wants to give away something? Well, you know, that's not going to happen. I mean, that's we have a democratic uh, republic, and so we elect people to make those choices for us. Right, but are but... they? Who did that negotiating? <laughs> exactly. The city staff, city oh, attorney. Sure. This council didn't do that. Oh, no, no. The council didn't do it. This came from staff, somebody on staff. So what happened? There were 19 acres of Heritage Park that Costco purchased uh, for $3.53 million uh, back on July 27th of last year. Now, uh, they think that that is improper, and in fact, it is an illegal uh, transaction. Hmm. Or an illegal business subsidy is the language that was used. Now, that's um, going to be hard to prove because the city, to me, not that it's right, would have precedent on this. That, hey, wait a minute. Yeah. We're not doing anything different than anybody else. Not that that's good. Right. But how could you challenge that in court is where I'm kind of, um, I mean, what's a judge going to do? Come along and cancel the sale. You'd have to cancel the sale of everything. Yeah, well, right now, and and that's exactly it. I mean, uh, St. Cloud Mayor Dave Kleiss said there's, well, the, the figured it out, and that's probably who figured this out, or the attorneys for the, t- that's probably where it came from. So you just have, yeah. <laughs> but here's the thing. Kleiss said that the lawsuit won't delay Costco's construction or the city's reconstruction of roads near the development. So we're just going to go ahead and do it, and I don't know if we get tagged on it, I guess. Well, but you know what's going to happen then. Yeah. The argument's going to be, well, it's too far along now. We have right. to, you know, Costco spent all this money and promised all these jobs to so-and-so, and what are you going to do when, when uh, you know, Muhammad doesn't have his job anymore? I mean, what are you going to do? Now, it also says in this, in this that a, that a uh, similar piece of land... 18 acres was appraised for $5.1 million. Yes. Well, how much is an acre, by the way? What's um, an acre? I don't know. That. I, I, I'll look that up. I'll okay. get the exact measurements. Well, I know I, gr- I grew up on two and a half acres, and it was a pretty good deal of land, you know? Okay. Um, I mean, like, what? how much is, like, a city square block, you know? Yeah, I don't know. That's Okay. But... Uh, it says here, an acre of land, uh, or it's a unit of land area used in the imperial and U.S. customary systems. It is traditionally defined as the area of one chain by one furlong. Well, if that doesn't clear it up, I don't know what does. 66 by 660 feet, which is exactly equal to one 640th of a square mile or 43,560 square feet, and approximately 4,407 meters squared. Okay, you didn't clear it up. That or was. about the 40% of a hectare, if that, if oh, that helps. Okay. Well, heck, <laughs> as opposed to... Uh, uh, forget it. Heck meaning what, six? Hexagon? I, is uh, that? I, that's a good question. You got a pentagon. I don't know what a you got a is. octagon. Hector you know. is like a. That's out western Minnesota. Yeah. Hector. Yes, exactly. Oh, the hell with it. <laughs> Anyhow, so uh, 
you know, the, 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 the buying and selling of, of land in the name of the people. Yeah. Uh, well, and, and, and here we go. Uh, this maybe will help a little more. What is an acre? Try visualizing 60% of a soccer pitch. Soccer pitch? Or, or 16 tennis courts in a 4x4 four four formation. Okay. <laughs> Or 75% of an American football field. That clears it up for me. So that 75%. I understand. So, so ba- 120 yeah. yards if you include the end zone. Oh, true. Yeah. 90 yards then would be... Right. In, now, is that sideline to sideline? 50, side, 50, no, 53, I think or, it's a little... Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, okay. I still, that doesn't help me. I just want to know. Yeah. Okay, okay. Put it to you this way. Fargo is about 200 miles. Yes. Okay, How many acres is that? That's what I want to know. Fargo? To, how many acres to Fargo? Yeah. It's about uh, 200 miles, right? Something well, like that? I don't think you measure distance in acres. You measure area in acres. Oh, so it's got to be a square, square yes. foot? Yes. Okay. Square foot, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't helping. <laughs> All right, so now like, that no, we've no, thoroughly on, confused on. you all. Hold on, I got one more question. Okay. So, like, so, like, let's say somebody's got a front yard, a backyard, a house, yeah. a detached garage. Okay. Okay? Yeah. How many acres do you think that would be in, in Crystal or New Hope or Robbinsdale? Mm, I don't know. Half an acre? Maybe. Yeah, okay. Maybe. Yeah. Half, a third, something like that. Could be. I'm trying to think of my old house in Crystal. What that might be twenty percent of a hectare. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or, or, or no, it would be. Uh, it would only be two of those sixteen tennis courts. Right. That's what it would be. <laughs> <laughs> I can't picture that. No. It's like you have to. You have to like a be, you know, a baseball field is is what that's. You know, one acre or something like that. I mean, uh, well, you can't measure that because everybody's is different. You know, yeah, it'd have to be like a rectangle, like a basketball court. Or yeah, something. huh? Yeah. Ah, oh, boy, I'll tell you what—the things you learn on this show. And of course, right there, you learn nothing except the Hector or whatever yes. it was, or the heck of it, or whatever. Yes. Well, hexagon. Yeah, so, anyways, you're right though. Eighteen of those acres, uh, five point one million dollars, and something that's similar. So. Uh, the city valued the park property at less than three million. Um, yeah, that I don't know. The city assessor placed the valuation after that at four fifty and five dollars per square foot. Uh, so it seems that there's some discrepancies there as well. Um, that it said the lawsuit contends that the city is also obligated to incur about one point three million dollars in additional costs for road improvements that inure to the sole benefit of the buyer, which brings the purchase price purchase price to a lesser value. Which is interesting. So they're contending in the in the lawsuit that the road reconstruction that's going to happen will just benefit benefit Costco. Uh-huh. So they're really getting more than but is it, though? Because could they make the argument, well, if we build this road or this roundabout or whatever, that other development will come ar- around with it? Mm-hmm. You know, oh, I mean, they'll make that argument. Yeah. And that'll be look, discounted. Look at our, our plan. That'll you know? be discounted. Yeah. Somebody will get that for right. less. Then right. the bus will go by. So there's transit. Right. You know, and all that kind of stuff. So it's just a way, again, to centrally plan. Mm-hmm. You know, we're gonna one big company is gonna come here, and then they're gonna tell us what they want, and over time we're gonna give it to them. I mean, it may take ten years for all this. Roads aren't built in a weekend, right? You know, and other businesses aren't either. But yeah, so so bottom line is here that they say that the park property sold to Costco is really between eight point three million and nine point one million. Uh, based on what so, it lists as an independent appraiser. So they get a discount, and then now the city is expected to build roads around, or the taxpayers are. Right. And sidewalks and guardrails and bus stops and, you know, greenways and, mm-hmm. and bike paths and, uh, 
you know, bus stops and whatever else comes with it, you know, extra turn lanes, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, crossing guards, patrols, right. everything that comes uh -huh. with it, you know, is all going to be, are they going to, are they going to pay franchise fees for all that? Maybe, maybe, maybe huh. the St. Cloud, I believe Just does them. have franchise fees already. Oh, so sure they, they do, they can redirect those and. No, they'll just yeah. up it, they'll just up it on everybody else. Right. Oh, it's That's only the way it works. Only ten cents a month, or yeah. so they always. Why do they always break it down to the lowest denominator like that? I know it's a it's because a sales it, pitch, right? But, so you're making it seem less than it is. Yeah. It's like instead of paying four hundred bucks for this, uh, it's just seven dollars well, a week or whatever. Just a cup of coffee an hour. Yeah, latte a day, right? <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah. I wonder. I wonder. Now that was last summer, or last August. I wonder what's happened since. Yeah, I haven't. I haven't seen anything. You yet, people in St. Cloud, are you friends of ours, and you know who you are because it's most of them. Uh, you go ahead and send us an email or uh, and make a comment on the podcast or at the blog, and and get to the bottom of that. Absolutely. But uh, the real moral of the story is, I mean, this is happening everywhere. Where. This, Companies are being given breaks that they really don't deserve on the backs of the taxpayers in order to be able to pay for their stuff. So, well, and, and uh, you know, I'll throw something out here too. Um, you know, some of these companies do uh, give back, and some of these companies do hire a lot of people, and uh, they can become a staple in a community, and that's certainly yeah. true. Uh, but you know, if, if we're really going to practice capitalism here and we're really going to let the market, you know, you hear companies say, I'll let the markets decide and blah, blah, blah. Well, mm -hmm. who's negotiating directly with government sitting down and, and you know, they're, they're in the same mud bath. Right. Well, we all know who it is. It's, it's the same people who keep saying to leave us alone. Mm -hmm. You know, they want to deregulate, they want lower taxes, but the second government is there to hand out for them, it's kind of like somebody who, you know, opposes this and opposes that unless they're the one getting it. Right. You know, so then all of a sudden the principles go out the window. So, mm -hmm. unfortunately, it's just, you know, par for the course there. Yeah. Well, that's that's lovely. What a great way to open the show. Yeah, depressing enough and... As often happens on this program, not going to get any better. Yeah. Well, that's not true. By the way, by the way, I already forgot the song. Who was the song? Oh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Don't tell me. It was uh, uh, Def Leppard. Def Leppard. Okay, no, no, no that's no, not right. That's no, not right. No, no, no. Rage, Rage on the Machine. No. No, it wasn't them. How about, uh, oh, let's see. Who's that one guy? Motley Cruz. No. <laughs> Wasn't them? Okay. No. Oh, let me get one more here. Um, oh, the village people. No. It wasn't them? Okay. I, I give up. That's Pink Floyd. Hey, I've heard of them. Welcome to the machine. I've heard of them. Dark Side of the Moon. Yes. Okay. Not this one, though. This came off of the Wish You Were Here album. I just know the pyramid in the front. Yes. No, this is the one where on the front you have one guy shaking the hand of another guy and the one guy's on fire. Hmm. Yeah? No? No. Okay. No. All right. Welcome to the machine. But I'm going to count that as half a right answer because I've heard of what? Pink Floyd. That, no. What? Well, I've heard that's, of them. That's like saying I, I've, I've heard of uh, the Brooklyn Dodgers. Therefore, I can, I can get half credit for not being able to name any of the years they won the World Series. Well, there's only one. So well, you uh, uh, still, <laughs> get half credit. I can name the year. Uh, 1955. Me. All right. So welcome to the machine. There, you could right. quiz me on any year and I could get I, it right. I know that I could. All right. Yeah. We'll save that for another show. I'd like to quiz, quiz you on who's going to win in 2019. So I go, Huh. I mean, well, I'm not going to place any bets. That would be wrong. I'd love to see my Yankees, but I don't think that's going to happen. Just leave it at that. Well, that's the best news I've had all day. <laughs> all right, so we're moving on to... How can you not like the Yankees? I like underdogs. Oh, I don't know. Oh, I like a success story. And I like a success story, but I like to watch a success story from somebody who's built themselves up from nothing, you know? 
I, li- I like that whole progression. Go back, go back to when Jake Rupert bought the Yankees in 1913. Who were they then? Oh, my word. Nine, we got to go back to 1913. Yeah, one to, of the worst years in the United States government. Oh, absolutely. But let me tell you something. That's why I don't want to go back. <laughs> I go back to 1912. I would do uh, that. But <laughs> see, that just proves everything that I need to know right oh. there. All this terrible stuff happened in 1913, including the purchase yeah. of. <laughs> Wasn't Yankees. just Woodrow Wilson that no. it was everything else. As far as I'm concerned, he's the one that started this whole deal with the Yankees. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and Jake Rupert yeah. was a Democratic congressman. So he was uh, in when, cahoots with... No, before that, uh, when uh, McKinley was president and he left Congress, uh, Teddy Roosevelt was president when he left Congress. But that uh, was... Um, he was like served three or four terms as a congressman. Wow. But he, was, he owned a brewery and, of course, Prohibition right. eventually uh, made the Yankees his brewery. Hmm. Again, a story for another day. Yes. That, we're going to welcome a different uh, subject. Yes, we are. We're welcoming. We are we are a welcoming podcast here, folks. We are. We're Anybody? inclusive and equitable. That's right. You know English? You can hear the podcast just as well anywhere, right? I would argue that you could hear the podcast anywhere just as well, no matter what you speak. Ah, this is true. You just may not comprehend it right. as well. No doubt about it. But we are inclusive here. Yes. We, per, we, per, we, per, um, uh, we are podcast inclusivity. Yes. I just made up a word. Inclusivity. That, you didn't make that up. That's not a word. That's a word. Uh, that's a word? That's a word. I looked in the dictionary. It didn't, it didn't show it. Inclusivity is a word. Oh, damn it. I thought I made up a word. <laughs> That is to the degree of which you are inclusive. Oh, is it? I thought that was uh, most inclusive or something. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Inclusivity. (laughs) Okay. Yeah, you look under in the thesaurus under antonyms and you see conservative. I guess. Right. Well, you have to tell me what an antonym is first. (laughs) The opposite. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let's just say opposite. I guess I. Why do we have to come up? Why do we have to come up with words that mean something else? I don't know. I mean, just just a general question, you know. Something that's the same. We have like 20 different words that mean same. Yeah. Okay, so why is it that we can't, you know, it's, it's um, I don't know. Uh, I'm just trying to think of something that we, you know, it's, uh, it, it's, it's hot. Yeah. Okay, there's a million ways to say that. Right. It's on fire. Hot as heck. Uh, it's, it's warm. It's uh, boiling. It's, I mean, it's like we come up with... Antonym. I haven't heard the word antonym in 20 years. Just well, so you know. We're breaking I don't the get mold out much. today in, yeah. in every way. We're welcoming, we're welcoming every word to our pot. We are inclusive See, on every e- word. Even of words, we're inclusive. We have word inclusivity. <laughs> Speaking of inclusivity. Yeah, yes. Okay. What are we talking about here today? We're Jay? talking about major inclusivity. Welcoming cities. I don't like them already. <laughs> Now, first off, <laughs> yes. first off, before we get into what they are, because I'm sure you, our, our, our normal listeners can probably already tell where we're going to go with this show. And you may be right and you may be wrong, okay? Because I, I really don't care about welcoming cities. What I care about is the agenda behind it. And that's, right. what, that's what, again, we're doing the job that, that you won't find out anywhere else. Why doesn't, why doesn't uh, you know, any news organization or any investigative journalist, if we still have those, why aren't they trying to figure... you got, you got some of the largest cities in this entire nation, Jay, in mm-hmm. almost every state that are welcoming cities. Yes. And nobody knows what the hell a welcoming city is. Yeah. Now, you and I, okay, right. can figure this out in very short amount of time. Why is it no one else can? Well, doesn't get any press. You don't hear about this stuff anymore. What do you mean it doesn't get any press? We're the most popular people on podcasting. Well, we're just bringing it up for the first time. Oh, okay. I mean, you can spend all night talking about the latest poll numbers, or the latest President Trump's huh. tweets, or the latest... Uh, latest socialist to get into the Democratic race, or you can actually figure out on the ground what's going on in some of these cities here in America. Absolutely. All right. 
Go ahead. Welcoming. So who, what, what, who are they? What is this? All right. If you're keeping score at home, it's welcomingamerica.org. If you, if you, as Herb Carneal would say, if you're scoring at yeah. home, welcomingamerica.org. Yes. Um, so who they say they are? <clears throat> Welcome. <clears throat> Let me do that again. Welcoming America leads a movement of inclusive communities becoming more prosperous by making everyone feel like they belong. We believe that all people, including immigrants, are valued contributors who are vital to the success of our communities and shared future. Really? <clears throat> Let me ask a question. Why are immigrants always assumed to be a good thing adding value. Is there something wrong with a city that doesn't have mass immigration to it? No. See, this is just what I'm talking about. The, the assumption is that we aren't a welcoming nation. Right. That we're, we're going to round people up and, and kick them out. and We don't even deport illegal aliens who commit felonies. So why does anybody have any fear you know, why do we have to declare that we're welcoming to everybody? I'll tell you why. Because there's an ulterior agenda with it. Mm -hmm. You know, because this is this harmless. How could you be against welcoming cities? Right. You know, that's what. Well, that's what they name it. It's like they do that on purpose. Yeah, it's a sales. It's a yeah. sales propaganda. It's marketing 101. You name it, so innocuous and 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 good sounding. You can't. You can't fight against that. You can't argue with welcoming cities. No, and of course, of course, around here, you have to know Minneapolis. Oh, who would have guessed Minneapolis is a welcoming city? I don't feel very welcome. I certainly don't. If you're driving a car, you're sure not welcome. Oh, well, that's for sure. Um, Minneapolis, and I'm getting MinneapolisMN.gov, is part of Welcoming America, a network of cities and counties that foster inclusivity... See? No, inclusive communities. Oh. I, I'm just... Uh, okay. I was just throwing my word in there. And believe that everyone feels like they belong. Oh. Hmm. Well, you, you've got to be you got to be in favor of that. Well, What's the mayor of Minneapolis? Is, can he, is he old enough to drink? Yeah. Is, is he? So. I wasn't I, sure. I, I would guess he's in his 30s. Oh, okay. Can't or really something. Uh, I'm not sure he's shaved yet. Well, and, and here's the thing, though. Welcoming cities. Who can argue with that? That, that? That's the whole point. If we were talking about immigrants are moving in and you have churches and other groups that are helping them get on their feet, learn English, get a job, traditional stuff that, that you know, programs, uh, not just government programs, Right, charitable programs by private entities as well that were creating an environment where immigrants were able to get on their feet and, and become a part of our culture, our, our nation, our cities. That is fantastic. And that is something that we should aspire to. You know, that we've had a lot of problems in the past, with, you know, with the Irish, with, with all sorts of, of groups that have emigrated from their countries to the United States, and we don't want race wars or anything like that. You're right. They have happened. I mean, you go back to the World War One, the Creel Committee going out there and, and uh, I, I would argue, discriminating against German-Americans. Right. You know, I mean, it did happen. Certainly the Japanese out During in World the War II, West yeah. Coast. It has happened. We don't want that. But I want to first make a distinction. Okay, and this is... This is something that the um, you know the open borders crowd has. You know, if you don't have a border, you don't have a country. Right. I mean, I'm sorry, but the idea that that you know I, I'm some sort of uh, you know Nazi if if I think we ought to control who comes into the country and who doesn't. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing you have to do is make a distinction between a legal immigrant and an illegal immigrant. Right. And I think what's happened is those lines have been blurred. You go, you go over the past, you won't even hear the term illegal alien used, even undocumented worker, which was the politically correct way to say that for a while. You don't hear any of that anymore. 
Right. It's always immigrants, 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 refugees. What, that, that's always the term put on it. Mm-hmm. So whoever's here legally, illegally, who cares is sort of the, the, the motto now. And no distinction is made at all. Um, there's a bill, you know, in the Minnesota legislature that mm-hmm. anybody who's here can have a driver's license. We talked about that on our show last week right. with, with uh, uh, Hutch Hutchinson. Uh, bill 1500. Yeah. HR uh, 1500, yeah. Um, to, to do that, I mean, there's no distinction made anymore between illegal and an illegal immigrant. And I have to say, too, that, that part of the issue is... Legal immigration is complicated and, and, and can take years. And, you know, the paperwork, government can't grab their arse with both hands. And, you know, there's, there's a lot of things that are wrong. But the, the number one thing that's wrong is there's no distinction made between somebody who comes over the border with drugs or comes over and they're immediately on some government this or government that. Uh, then they get a driver's license, and then pretty soon they're voting. And there's, you know, there's no distinction made anymore, which is so frustrating when you talk to, about these groups. Is is the real agenda behind it? Is open borders and no enforcement of the law whatsoever we'll get into that in a sec right but that's ultimately where we're going here this isn't about immigrants being you know throwing out a red carpet or a yellow brick road and having them walk down it when they get in here and and you know if you if you if you don't want open borders you're an islamophobe a racist a mexicanophobe <laughs> yeah, okay i made up a word you're uh you know um you know you you you're a Nazi. You're um, you want internment camps. I mean, it's it's so over the top. I'm I'm baffled. Anyone believes? I mean, I'm beyond baffled. Someone believes that, but but considering all the propaganda out there, maybe I'm not so baffled. Right. I, really, at the crux of it, I mean, it's about bringing in voters. Well, you know, you I know mean, that's that that is it, right? If 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 you can, and, and there's there's a Republican side to this too, though. Well, yeah, because it, the the Democrats right now, their get out the vote effort is this: lower the voting age, yeah, get felons to vote, yeah, and if the country won't, if that won't work, this country still won't vote Democratic. Bring in people who will, right? That's their get out the vote effort. But there are Republicans who are complicit in this. There are Republicans who want. And not all are Republicans, but people who want the cheap labor. Mm-hmm. Um, there's the people I would argue, I would argue those workers are exploited. I, I would argue that that is exploiting people, not welcoming them. Right, exploiting them. Absolutely. Um, they're not paying taxes on some of that because some of those people are paid in cash. Yeah, we all know the industries we're talking about here. This is out in the picking berries out in California and doing mm-hmm. drywall work or something like that. I mean that's. That's what we're talking about here, and there is um, there are unions complicit in this because they're mm-hmm. trying to bring people in and throw them. You'd think unions would be against this. The trade unions probably are, but the ones who, because they're unaffected by it. learning a trade is something completely different, right? Than just you know throwing. Okay, we'll bring in so and so as a cook in the school district, and now they're part of. Uh, Asks me or whatever. Right. Of course, then they get told who to vote for. Part of their paycheck goes to who they vote for. Yeah, and it's just pumping up their numbers that way. But it is, it is, um, it is incredible. This, this, this is, this is human trafficking. Mm-hmm. Is it not? If they're brought here against their will, yes. When you have people that. Scurry over the border on their own, then no, they're just they're breaking the law willfully. True, but we are providing the magnet for them to do so. They're, yeah, they're doing it for a reason. Yeah, that's and this true. is not the same. This is not the same because people will throw this in my face. Oh, oh, well, didn't your ancestors come from some foreign country? Well, then they're no different than you. Baloney, they're not. People who came here then came here to be Americans. Nobody was a hyphenated American back then. Mm-hmm. They came here for opportunity, religious freedom, whatever reason they came. They came here to stay. They didn't ask for anything for free. 
Okay, right. they didn't come and and demand that you spoke their language. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's not the same. It's nothing close to the same. So that is BS. That's just a way to deflect and to not deal with the issue at hand. Mm. You can't just st- we can't, look. We if open borders, people have it their way. We are in a country where we just sit here and we just we get invaded, yeah. and if we try to stop it. Oh, 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 you're you're racist. You're you're a xenophobe. You're right. a whatever. And I mean it's it's to that point where where everybody we used to see immigration as I don't know whether it's a net plus or minus. To me you can debate that. I don't know how we're a stronger country by importing poverty. I don't understand that. But you could argue in some cases it's a net positive, in some cases it's a net minus. I'm not going to get into how I think that, but you could make that. How is, how is having a city overrun by refugees, immigrants, people who don't speak the language, uh, people who cluster in the, and I understand why, because they're not assimilating. Yeah. How is that to any benefit whatsoever of said city? Yeah, I don't know. You know, I, obviously, I mean, there there are some, I, I guess, benefits. Uh, I think of like, I found myself uh, a while back. I, I've been there a couple of times. There's, there's a oh, you're of, finally found. Uh, yeah. Oh, there's, there's a couple of places in Minneapolis. Uh, one being on Elliott and Twenty Fourth. That is, as I kind of call it, the Somali Mall. Oh. Uh, it's nothing but, I, I guess. Vendors that sell rugs and clothes, and and there's restaurants in there, and and I've gone to like uh, there's a place called the Deg Deg Grill. Um, throwing a plug, I guess it's some of the nicest guys I've ever met work in that place. But you know, uh, you you've got all these people, you know, in this one area, and I it, as they sell things, I sell ta- sales taxes and all that stuff would go to the city, and so I mean you, you've got that, um, you know. The, but okay, let, let me ask that, a stupid question. Yeah, thirty or forty years ago, who was there? Was it a different business there? Oh, I'm it? sure. It's so yeah. yeah. So are we just trading one person for another? Yeah, probably. But I mean, it, when you're talking about like major impacts, I, I don't know. I mean, look, I want people to be successful. Yeah, that's. I'm not saying that. I'm saying, I don't understand how having you know. I don't want little Italy's and little Mogadishu's. Um, I want, I don't want, that, that should be the opposite of what we're going for in this nation. Right. Okay. There shouldn't be a cluster of anything anywhere. Mm-hmm. People, ought, they, they need mobility. They need to be able to move up. But we have such high numbers that we never let that happen. Like, you know, I'll give you an example. Um, you know, go back to New York back in in uh, the turn of the century. Yes, and and how some of the five boroughs were were cluttered with. I don't want to say cluttered, but you had Italians in one area, and you had Irish in one yeah. spot. Okay, now over time. They went out to Levittown, and then the next generation went to Long Island, and the mm-hmm. next they gradually because we allowed we stopped the mass immigration around World War One, nineteen twenties. We said, "Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on." Oh, you know, we we we've got to get some control over this. And what what happened was the those folks I know because my great grand great great grandparents nineteen oh five is when they came through Ellis Island. Um, those folks, those Italians, those Irish, the the who I mean, I'm, I'm blanking on nationalities. Doesn't like here, I mean the Swedes and yeah, the, the sure, Norwegians Scandinavians, and, sure, yeah, they Germans, yeah. You know, the next generation moved out to the suburbs in the fifties. Mm-hmm. Okay, the generation after that knew nothing but America. Yeah, and eventually they became Americans. So to me, you've got to you've got to say okay, okay. We got enough folks here. What we need to do now is go, okay, let's, you know, English became their first language, if mm-hmm. you go back to that. And you had, you had a lot of Asians on the West Coast after World War II did the same thing. Um, you had German-Americans in this area of, of, the, of the 
the you know, the upper Midwest yeah. that settled here uh, in the late 1800s, and the next generation, you know, uh, built up this city and moved out here, and and it happened organically. Yes. Um, but it didn't happen by force. Nobody said, okay, we're going to take a bunch of refugees and dump them here in a city. Mm-hmm. Whatever happens just happens. Right. And meanwhile, we're not going to stop it after that uh, because then, you know, you're racist if you believe that. <laughs> you know, so to me, that's where the step that is being missed is, okay, you're here, you're going to stay here. Well, now you become an American. Right. Okay. And there's certain, you know... Knowing and respecting our Constitution and knowing civics here, learning our language, learning our culture. Right. You know, not that you can't practice yours, but you got to have respect for where you're living. Yeah. So all of those things are missed. And I mean, again, it's a long winded answer here, but, but the whole not distinguishing between people who are here legally and illegally is very irritating. Yeah. Now, you want to hear the real agenda? I would love to. Here's the real agenda. Okay. Welcoming cities. This is from IllinoisPeoplesAction.org. These are proposed ordinances for Bloomington and Normal, Illinois. Now, I don't know how old this is. doesn't matter. It's what's currently on their website. And it's, it's they talk about welcoming cities. Um. Prohibit the police from using their resources to help federal immigration and customs enforcement agents in any way. Mm. Any way. So it's not about welcoming them here. It's about getting them here and making sure they stay here. Right. Okay. Any enforcement of the law cannot happen. Prohibiting would include stopping or holding anyone based on immigration status. Um, so if, uh, uh, you know, the, the Ayatollah from Iran or whatever is here, we can't stop them based on their immigration status, mm-hmm. right? <clears throat> you know, <laughs> the drug kingpin of Mexico is here uh, illegally. Oh, you can't hold him on his immigration status. Mm. No. Cooperating with ICE by providing surveillance or help with raids. That's something that's prohibited. Prohibited or yes. proposed to be. So you can't work with other law enforcement, turf wars. Allowing ICE agents to question individuals in custody. They cannot, allow, they cannot mm. question individuals. Prohibit the city from entering a voluntary agreement to participate in, I don't know what, 287G securities communities, I don't know what that is, or any other optional federal law enforcement program. Prohibit the city from collecting and sharing information on the immigration status of their residents. Prohibit, I don't know that they do that. Um, The census doesn't even ask that. Prohibit the city from participating in blah, blah, blah. Oh, uh, any programs based on religion? Huh? Where, oh, prohibit the city from participating in voluntary federal registry programs oh, based okay. on religion. So, no Muslim registries. Oh, but the Christian ones, okay. Huh? Require city officials to consider requests for certification for U visas, a way for undocumented immigrants who've been victims of crime, blah, blah, blah. Um, so, basically, asylum applications would you call that asylum uh somebody yeah. who's the victim of a crime yeah. so basically that is what they're pushing for in those two cities now that doesn't sound like welcoming to me that sounds like uh um worse that's almost worse than becoming a sanctuary city yeah i would have to call that worse well, a lot of this is repeat from last week with uh, Hutch some Hutchinson. of what yeah, Hutch wants to do um, as far as from a sheriff's point of view. You know, uh, he didn't want to work with ICE. And well, that, I, would, I would argue that right now it's de facto that's probably happening. Right. He's not coming out and doing it, but that's, 
That's uh, yeah, you know, funny thing is, one of the first welcoming cities was Chicago, yeah. which happens to be like the deadliest city in the country. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like the most gun violence or anything anywhere. And yeah. it's, you know, some of the groups pushing this. I mean, the Clinton Global Foundation, you know, it's a global initiative. Yeah. You know, it's bad enough Bill and Hillary uh, take their used underwear and donate <laughs> that and write it off on their taxes. Now they've got to do this. Uh, on top of it, ACLU involved, Southern Poverty Law Center, another, you know, mm. uh, a pro-open borders group, Council on America Islamic Relations. Which, oh, sure. Uh, they're a terrorist organization. I, I would argue they are as well. I mean, they're, they're basically the fundraising arm of Hamas. They certain no doubt about it. Um, so welcoming city. I mean, you know, it's been compared to sanctuary cities, but sanctuary cities kind of... Don't they kind of require, like, a, you have to talk about, at least, debate being a sanctuary city? Yeah. Welcoming cities just kind of happens, and it's kind of back door yeah. without, you know, any real... It, it, it disguises what it really is. Mm-hmm. Um, so welcomingamerica.org also has got this long... Um, 39 page welcoming standard of certification. So they get to decide whether your city is up to their standards in, in welcoming. Yeah. By the way, do you know the clock on the wall is broken? Is it? Yeah. It's been that time for the entire time we've been here. Wow. Or it needs a new battery. Well, it's only taken me up. We've been here for quite a while. <laughs> didn't notice. <laughs> But anyway, this 39-page thing of what becomes really the, the, the crux of it's at the very end. The requirements, the requirements of government leadership design a unit <laughs> and staff to coordinate immigrant inclusivity. No, inclusion. Um Plan for community-wide immigrant inclusion implements said plan with the collaboration of diverse stakeholders and mm. maintain the plan in consultation with the immigrant community. So they get to write their own plan, I guess. Yes, it sounds that way. Advance equity, diversity, and inclusion in hiring and employee retention, i.e. affirmative action. Right. That's... English for that. Once again, another thing that means one thing. You know, you say affirmative action, people seem to have a negative connotation to it. You say equity and inclusion in hiring. There must be a, one of Frank Luntz's groups or something uh, focusing on that. Um, advance equity, diversity, and inclusion in sourcing and contracting, i.e., you don't get a contract to do something unless X amount of your people are minorities. Right. So... Um, so they could uh, they could write District 281's uh, next unified <laughs> district vision. I already started. I called dibs. Now listen what uh, they listen to what they want a local government to do. You tell me where this is, and you tell me you tell me a city that has this in their charter. I'd okay. like to see that. Advance equitable access to healthcare, housing, transportation, judicial system, legal services, mediation, and comprehensive language access for immigrants. Mm. Wow. Um, Economic development, support immigrant entrepreneurs in business in starting, building, and growing their companies. So, give them special favors, I guess is what we're saying. Yeah. Engage local employers and chambers of commerce ugh, to create welcoming and safe work environments. Oh, okay. Well, that's just... I mean, this is gobbledygook, but it tells you how big this is. I mean, um, advance uh, access to voting rights mm -hmm. for eligible immigrants. Well, we all know... They want to change the definition of yeah. what's, who's eligible. You know, it, That's always revolving, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. Connected communities. Oh, God. I didn't want to read that. You can read it on your own, folks. I don't need to read it to you. Welcome and engage immigrant students and their parents in K-12 schools. 
invest, i.e. spend, in adult education, career readiness. Oh, the soccer moms like that. Uh. And access, career readiness and, uh, no, career path and college readiness. I'll tell you mm. what, boy. <laughs> you want to get a college mom to, uh, 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 to fall in love with you, just say those words. Um, and access to technical and professional degree programs. So, I mean, look at how, uh, Jay, look at how big all this stuff is. I know. Public safety, there's a whole thing in there on that. Educate immigrants on their legal rights. You know what? You want to be here? Educate yourself. <laughs> I mean, see, nobody, I mean, come yeah. on here. I mean, ignorance, you, you, the law doesn't allow ignorance. If I drive 100 miles down the road, I can't say, well, I, I, I didn't know that was the law. Yeah. Well, too bad, pal. <sighs> Anyhow, I mean, just lots and lots and lots of stuff. By the way, uh, you want to talk about who is... There's 117 nonprofit organizations working with Welcoming America. Wow. And it's, it's not necessarily all a bunch of whack jobs. I mean, yeah, you've got the Southern Law, Poverty Law Center, and you've got the ACLU, and you've got things like that, but I mean... James J. Hill Center and uh, can, uh, wow. Jewish Social Services, Jewish families. There's Christian groups on here. I mean, it's one thing for a church to provide, uh, you know, a safe place in a community or a place to worship. That's one thing. Right. For them to advocate this kind of thing is something a little different, I think. Mm -hmm. The Global Switchboard. The Literacy Center. The Global Switchboard. I don't know. Is that George Soros uh, playing with so, puppets or something? No. YMCA. Hey, 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 Mabel, dial me up Tanzania. <laughs> it's Tuxa <of> Hazard. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, 93 units of local government. And not all, you know, if this was all California, New York, and Illinois, it would be one thing. But you've got cities from Idaho, from Georgia, from Kentucky, from uh, Tennessee, uh, from Florida, uh, Arkansas, North yeah. Dakota, Iowa. I mean, it's not just your normal, it's not the Ninth Circuit Court of Cities here. It's, right. It's, it's ever, Oklahoma, um, Winona, Minnesota on the list, wow. if you can believe that. Cityofwinona.com. Well, Winona was the first city in Minnesota to become a welcoming city. They actually beat out, they're a green step city. Yeah. They actually beat out Minneapolis. Huh. So, um, and I mean, this is all over their like front page here. Remind me never to travel through there. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> See who's on their council here. See how ugly they are. Really? No, I mean, it's just, well, like one guy's bald. So we got uh, seven, seven council people, seven council people. So this thing that you're going through, the, the welcoming standard and certified welcoming, mm -hmm. it, it, it is a rigorous list of criteria which cities and counties must meet in order to be recognized as a welcoming city. Now, this isn't unlike Green Step Cities, where it's all about the recognition. Uh, certainly, somebody can go put in LED light bulbs on their own, but the city is not going to get the recognition that that uh, you know they all crave, to, so that they can hobnob around at the League of Minnesota Cities and go, "Hey, did you see? I made level two. You know, and that, that's what this is. It's like they can. You either got the, all the city managers getting together at the League of Minnesota Cities and hey, we got uh, we got recognized as a welcoming city, you know, <laughs> and, and it's it, it's really just a social talk piece, I think, and it, well, it, it's more than that because obviously there's this whole litany of of bad policy that they want you to implement. Well, and it also but, it also is uh, the peer pressure. I mean, as, right. as it spreads and it spreads and it spreads, there's pressure, and all of a sudden, city staff will go, "Oh, well, hey, 
be a welcoming city. We can get all this this wonderful pats on the back from right so and so, and they'll put us on some list, and we could have a nice nice uh, video on our website and so on and so uh-huh. forth about welcoming. <laughs> oh. So you know, I mean, but you know, Jake, can, yeah. I, can I say something broadly? This is also an attempt, is it not, to forever change the racial makeup of this nation. Yes. I mean, there is an effort out there to, as Oprah Winfrey says, we need the white people to die out. You know, the old white people need yeah. to just die. Wow, that's nice. Yeah, so I, I mean, guess I hadn't heard that quote. Yeah, she said something like that. I'm paraphrasing. Yeah. Um, something, the usual disgust that comes from her. Yeah. But, you know, the the whole... Um, that 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 there, there's an epidemic going on in this country. I think of of epidemic. Maybe is the wrong word, but young people. We've got a lot of elderly folks, mm-hmm. and well, young people aren't having kids like they used to for a variety of reasons. They come out of college and they're hundred grand in debt. Yeah. Thanks to this college scheme we have in this country. There's a lot of people not getting married till their thirties. Yeah, there's a lot of people who can't afford to live on their own. There's they do, they're at the animal house with three roommates. Uh re- real estate is expensive. Yeah. It's hard to get your life going sometimes. And <clears throat> as a result of that, we have fewer people yeah. And more older folks, so we are supplementing that by importing people in. Right. Now that has long-term consequences, and one of the long-term consequences is to completely change American culture. It's going to. I mean, it's just you, you can't help but not. Right. American culture was changed a hundred years ago when when Irish folks and Italians. And, I mean. Ultimately, they adopted a lot of American cultures, but but the nation wasn't the same anymore. Right. So, I mean, is that there is that you just in fifty years is is what we consider American traditions? Are they going to still? How many of them are going to be gone by the? Now I'll be dead. But I mean, you know, well, there'll be a lot of them gone. Yeah. You know. I th- at some point, you know, and, and we've seen a deterioration of that over time, you know, whether it be restricting things like Christmas or, right. you know. I, just, I always think of the, the decline or attacks on Christianity, which seems to be the only religion anyone can make fun of. Right. You know, you wouldn't dare say that. I would say Jewish folks are targets as well. Yeah, they are as well. So, I mean, but it seems like that's, you know. Were those e- those evil evangelicals that are you know mm. horrible enough to go to church and be pro life? Right. You know we need to supplement them with you know somebody we can bring in and then indoctrinate. Right. So I mean there's 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 I mean you go into schools and they're being taught to be world citizens, you know, and not be taught to be Americans. I mean this this has to have. In effect on our culture that we we is irreversible. Yeah, I, don't know. I just think I think it's scary. I mean, I just think it's it's too much change in too short of a time. Yeah, and, and I want to clarify. I mean, immigrants aren't scary. People who no, look I mean aren't scary. But that's how the left takes things. Right. Right. You know, right. Uh, they won't debate it. They'll just you know. right. But uh, you know, they use emotion. You know, is what they do. I mean, they'll sit and call conservatives Nazis, but Nazis are national socialists. You tell me what's conservative about that. (laughs) Yeah, what's conservative about being a fascist? (laughs) Hitler and Mussolini believed in limited government? I mean, what? (laughs) Absurd. Yeah, it, it the buck stops with them, and it starts with them as well. It's very limited. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, that's... It's ridiculous to call yeah. uh, conservatism fascism. I mean, that's just beyond. It's so ignorant. I mean, there's just again, it just goes to show how little understanding there is. Right. So, what do we do? I mean, as we're getting into the waning minutes of this podcast, what what do we do about this? Because we've got this program 
again, it's a recognition program, so people can yeah, can show off to good. their peers that they are providing this wonderful place of inclusivity and and uh, they're being equitable. How do we treat? immigrants with respect and dignity and and like human beings but yet still stand against something that is designed to fundamentally transform the fabric of our nation and tear down the the structures that we have built to keep order well and and let me give you just a dumb thing that maybe has little to do this is how much things have changed we've talked about this before about the renaming of of buildings and statues mm-hmm. being taken down take patrick henry high school yes okay in minneapolis um patrick henry we all know well actually maybe most people don't know who he is unfortunately unfortunately you can look him up we're not going to tell you here okay folks but he was an influential founding father a Absolutely. little you know, but you know not as well known as some of the people who went on to be president or whatever like that but patrick henry high school is now the demographics have changed tremendously mm-hmm. at patrick henry high school and the students want the, the students are being used i would argue as pawns in changing the name of the school. And I think eventually it will be changed. Yeah. And there's the kind of thing. Patrick Henry High School. Harmless school. Mm-hmm. It was never an issue. No. Nope. And now all of a sudden we're making... It's just tearing down a founding father and erasing him from history. Right. And that's the kind of stuff... And I know we've done shows on that. But that's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. You know, taking a, a statue of Robert E. Lee... And tearing it down, taking Andrew Jackson off of a twenty dollar bill, um, whether you like him or not, that's not the issue. Um, there's respect for somebody who used to be president of the United States. Um, you know, getting God out of the public realm. Yeah. Um, you know, we have separation. We have. We don't have separation of church and state. That's not in the Constitution, but we have. Freedom of establishment of a religion, mm-hmm. not freedom from religion. Right. So all of those things in our lifetime, Jay, have been attacked. Yes. Um, you know, in saying, so help me God or whatever was never an, I don't ever remember that being an issue until I became an adult. Mm-hmm. Now all of a sudden it's an issue now. So, you know, what's the end game here? I mean, what's, it, what are we going to get to a point? Is the end game where, where I think the end game is to kowtow opponents and silence them from not being able to freely speak. Right. The second they freely speak, they're a racist, they're a home. I can live with being called that stuff. But, you know, ultimately where you're not only can't speak, you're outnumbered. Yeah. You know? Doesn't matter what you think anymore. You, you're outnumbered. Yeah. I mean, that's, I think, the goal. It's kind of like, uh, you know, kind of like anything else. There's strength in numbers. Yeah. I mean, it's about shouting down the opposition until they're too afraid to speak up, and then you get to just have your way. Sure. Look what's going on in college campuses and on, uh, you know, anybody says anything controversial on TV, there's calls to fire them or. You know, there's no freedom of speech. Right. So, anyhow. So what do we do about it? Well, I think the first thing is, you know, you got to be involved in your community, whatever that means. you got to be involved in your churches. you got to be involved in your charitable groups. you got to be involved in your government. All three of those things, super important. And then what do you do with it? First of all, the people that come into your community, actually be welcoming to them. Don't, don't make up a laundry list of, of stuff that doesn't help. Actually be helpful. Actually be welcoming. Be a friend. Love your neighbor. That, that's the kind of stuff that makes a difference. And then, you know, like I, I said, get involved. And that doesn't mean just, like, show up to meetings. That means actually get on an advisory commission, run for an office, uh, become a leader, start a ministry in your church, get involved, uh, 
with you know the local lions or whoever and 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 put together some sort of drive to to feed people to clothe people uh these are the kinds of things that we can do in in your church uh, put together some sort of english english i can't even say english i need it i need english as a second language program maybe somebody yeah. can set that up for me you need some more inclusivity with your I words do, i do uh you know job finding programs things like that you know Th- these are things that we can do at a practical level to make our communities more welcoming for those who come in and and on the other side of the coin we also still need to uphold our laws we need to be able to communicate with immigration uh when when people come in and they haven't followed those laws or you know we have a violent criminal who uh, shouldn't be here. We need to be able to either imprison or get rid of, and not kill, but export them, or extradite yeah. them out of out of the country. Uh, you know, uh, we deport. That's that's the word I was looking for. Um, you know, that's the kind of stuff that we need to do to to clean this up. Yeah, I mean, I think that people are going to be a lot more open and welcoming of people that are coming here from somewhere else when they are trying when they come here wanting the american dream and they put in their best and and they follow the laws and they they try to just be good neighbors good citizens uh good friends you know and and when they you don't have this huge influx of drugs you don't have this huge influx of violent crime you don't have this huge influx of people taking off the dole um you know and and not replenishing those funds i think that 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 is what we need to look at and you got to do it by being involved you can't do it by sitting in your living room and complaining about it on facebook hmm. so i got to do something different then no <laughs> <laughs> I, I tweeted well, about Maybe it. I should say in addition to. Oh, in addition to. Uh, how about that? You can complain. Just actually put your 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 body to work and and do something as well. Hmm. So how do you like that? We got we got we got welcoming cities. Robert Tilton, <laughs> baseball's opener, yeah. and a land deal in St. Cloud all in one show. Find me another show good. that does that. That's pretty good. If you find it, you know what that is. Success in life. <laughs> Tell you what, I'm going to take it a step further. Yeah. If you have twenty dollars, send us ten. God will reward you with fifty. I'm not going to speak for. And God that is like success that. in life. Oh boy. Community solutions. We win elections. You know what that's called? Mm, success in that life. That is called success in life. That is for sure, and we're out helping win elections. We can help you. We can help you to get on an advisory council. We can help you to run a competitive election. We can help put your butt in a seat, sitting there, making decisions. Behold, brothers and sisters, you come to Community Solutions, and we help you get involved. That is yeah. success in life. That's true. All right, I'm done saying that. Do you want success in life? Then you gotta you gotta email us. You can do that at COMM Solutions. Keep Jessica Hahn away from yeah. it. Well, that's true. <laughs> COMM Solutions MN at gmail.com. That is COMM Solutions MN at gmail.com. You talk to us. We'll we'll come out and speak to your group. We we'll do this. I got the this, giggles. This is what we do. You want success in life. Hey, who was the guy? Yeah. It's all we do, and we do it well. The bankruptcy lawyer. What was his name? Is he still around? I have no idea. What's that? It's going to drive me nuts. Oh, boy. Prescott. Jack Prescott. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. All I do, and I do it well. Well, I think that we've packed about all we can do into this one. We better put a fork in it. We love you guys, and we're thankful that you listen every week. You know, we're thankful that you share this with people, because that's how other people find out. If you love what you hear, even if you like it a little bit, will you rate it? Because that's what pushes this information out to other people so they can find it easily. So uh, we're going to go away and and cook up another award-winning podcast for a week from now. Uh, Until then, you've got your marching orders. We ask you not to break rank because we are going to do the same. Uh, we'd love to know that, that you have our back here, that Team 
20K is going to go forward and we're going to start making positive changes in this state so that we don't lose everything and that we can continue to build the foundations of a strong and prosperous Minnesota. Why? Because we love you, Minnesota. But now it's your turn to get to work. Take my 